I have a question for you. What do 16th century Spanish forts, the largest rum distillery in the world, and elite level basketball players have in common? That's right, they can all be found in Puerto Rico. Well, except for the NBA players. In the entire history of the NBA, only eight Puerto Rican born players have ever stepped onto the court, and only two of them lasted more than 100 games. And despite the solid career that Carlos Arroyo carved out for himself, there's one name on here that stands out above the rest, J.J. Barea. Despite four decorated seasons at Northeastern, J.J. was relatively unknown coming out of college, and as such, he did not hear his name called in the 2006 NBA draft. But here's the thing, J.J. simply didn't care. Six weeks later, J.J. signed a contract with the Dallas Mavericks that paid him $412,000 for the year, and by the time he retired 14 years later, he had established himself as one of the greatest undrafted players to ever suit up. But the most remarkable part of his story isn't where he grew up, or the unsanctimonious beginnings of his career. In a league full of giants, JJ was a true short king. 7'7 Manute Bowl is the tallest NBA player in history. There have been some legendary giants that have come and gone over the years, but the overwhelming majority of players are somewhere between 6 and 7 feet tall. And down here we find JJ. But despite all that, JJ did something most NBA players can only dream of. Alongside a European big man that was written off as too soft before he even stepped on an NBA court, a supposedly over-the-hill point guard, and the man with one of the weirdest jump shots of all time, JJ was an integral part of one of the most special, and fittingly most unexpected, championship teams of all time. But this is not the story of JJ Barea. This is the story of another Mavericks legend, another undrafted player who defied the odds to play on the biggest stage. A man whose height is an equally impressive outlier, but on the other end of the scale. This is the story of a lovable goofball and noted J.J. Brea teammate. Down to Bobby. Makes the oh! 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 And he's fouled! As a 27-year-old rookie, Boban joined a team comprised of legends. It was a team with 37 combined all-star appearances between Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, Manu, David West, Kawhi, and LaMarcus Aldridge. And yet, from just the right angle, it was that goofy 27-year-old Serbian that ended up with the most impressive statistical footprint. Now, nothing I'm about to say should be taken seriously. It's just a funny story about a funny guy who is still much better at basketball than either you or me. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about him. This is the points, rebounds, and true shooting percentage per 100 possessions of Boban and five of the greatest centers to ever live. Your job is to figure out which one is Boban. If you thought it was player A, well, then unfortunately you've fallen right into my trap because that's Bill Walton. Let's see who else we have here. There's no surprise that Shaq has the highest scoring average. Then there's David Robinson, Hakeem Olajuwon, and Kareem. And finally, we have Boban. That's right, out of these legends of the game, it's Boban with the highest rebound average, the highest true shooting percentage, and the second highest scoring average. In fact, Bobi is fourth all time in rebounds per 100 possessions among players with at least 100 games played. And this is really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to his surprising statistical dominance. I warn you, we're about to go into the very murky world of player efficiency rating, aka PER. Now those of you that are well versed in advanced stats are probably already screaming about how PER is about as accurate as a stormtrooper. It's true. As far as NBA metrics go, PER is about as surface level as that two minute conversation you had with your last Uber driver. But you know what? I like PER. I like PER because it does a pretty okay job at giving a quick and dirty one number rating of a player's value. Let me ask you something. Who were the best players in the NBA in the 2023 season? Well, this is the list according to PER. Sure, you may not agree with everyone on here, but you gotta admit, it's a pretty good list. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry. All you really need to know is that with PER, 15 is always average, higher is better, and the best players in most seasons are usually right around 30. There are only 14 players in the entire history of the NBA with a career PER over 25. This is a graph of that club, organized vertically by how high each player's PER is, and horizontally by the total number of minutes each guy has played. Consequently, the most impressive section of this graph is the top right, 
where not only does a player have had to have one of the highest PERs in NBA history, but they've had to maintain it over a long career. There are exactly two players in this section of the graph. The first is the man with the highest PER of all time, and the second is the other half of the GOAT debate. In the top left are three of the best big men in the NBA today, joined by George Mikan, who, despite being the NBA's first true star, only played seven seasons. In the bottom right is a trio of legendary centers, joined by Bob Pettit and Kevin Durant. And finally, you have two young superstars in Zion and Luka tucked into the bottom left corner. Oh wait, that's only 13 players. Oh yeah, then there's Boban. I really can't stress enough how insane his presence in this club is. 12 of the 14 players on this graph are either already in the Hall of Fame or well on their way. And Zion, despite his complete lack of availability, has still been among the best players in the league whenever he's been able to make an appearance. To show you exactly how crazy this is, let me show you something else. In NBA history, among players that have played more than 120 games, there have been 684 players with an above average PER for their career. And this is them sorted by their minutes per game. Naturally, you'd expect the players with the highest PERs to play a lot of minutes every game, since they tend to be the best players. Sure, there's some noise here and there, but just look who's at the top. Wilt, Bill Russell, Oscar, AI, Jerry West, Larry Bird, Mike, LeBron, you get the idea. You know who's dead last on this list? It's the guy with the 12th highest PER of all time. Players that are this good, at least according to PER, aren't supposed to be here. I mean, just look how far away he is from all the other dots on this graph. No one else even comes close. So what's really going on here? Based on his raid stats and efficiency, Boban should be one of the best players in the league, so why doesn't he play? In short spurts, Boban is genuinely a very good scorer and rebounder. In fact, among players that score at least 30 points per 100 possessions, he's second only to Zion in efficiency. And this isn't some random cherry pick stat with a collection of random players at the top of the list. It's literally a who's who of the best active offensive players with the occasional Hall of Famer thrown in. So then why don't Boban's coaches let him loose? Well, simply put, he's really slow. In today's era of transition basketball and spread out offenses, players like Boban get picked apart on defense. I mean, even one of the best defenders of this generation faces the same dilemma in the playoffs from time to time. But unlike Gobert, Boban doesn't make up for his defensive limitations with elite rim protection. In fact, he's one of only six players to average less than two blocks per 100 possessions, despite being seven foot one or taller. So then why is his PER so high? Well, PER skews heavily towards big men. Over half the players with an above average PER are either centers or power forwards. There are a lot of reasons why this is true, but perhaps the biggest one is that PER probably overvalues individual rebounding numbers. Big men tend to get more rebounds because they're usually closer to the basket when the ball is shot, which means that a larger portion of a big man's rebounds when compared to smaller players are a result of circumstance and not a reflection of value. And PER's measure of defense is limited exclusively to steals, blocks, and fouls. And these stats are basically useless when it comes to measuring defensive impact. PER just wasn't designed with the intention to capture more advanced defensive stats that we have today. Instead, PER creator John Hollinger says, PER is meant to summarize a player's statistical accomplishments in a single number. And simple defensive stats really just don't measure defense properly. At this point, you might be wondering why some idiot is trying to convince you that Boban is not, in fact, just a perennial bench warmer, but one of the most statistically impressive big men of all time. Well, remember JJ Brea? According to PER, JJ is considered a below average player with a career PER of 14.5. His box stats are entirely unimpressive, and he has exactly zero individual accolades to speak of. But if you have any doubts that JJ was a valuable contributor, just listen to what Dwayne Wade had to say about the 2011 finals. And we got all played by uh, Dirk mm -hmm. and Jason Terry right. and J. That Kid, little, that J. J Kid, but that little Beret. JJ Barrera. <laughs> Nobody give him credit. J.J. Barrera was the one who changed the city. We didn't have no answer for him. You know what I like about baseball? It's easy to measure. Everything is a series of independent matchups between a pitcher and a hitter. If Shohei Otani hits a home run, then Shohei Otani gets all the credit. 
But you know what I love about basketball? It's impossible to measure. There are 10 different players moving 10 different directions, thinking 10 different things all at once. Basketball is the butterfly effect. One tiny decision here can have a huge effect there. Stats are important. They can tell you a lot about a basketball player. But if a triple slash gives you 90% of a player's value as a hitter, an NBA box score gives you maybe 40%, advanced stats can help us fill in some of the rest, but nowhere near 100%. And in my humble opinion, that is fantastic. Hidden in the numbers are all sorts of fascinating quirks that make for excellent stories. This year, Boban is suiting up for his ninth NBA season. The box score would have told you that he should have been out of the league years ago. The advanced stats tell you he's among the inner circle of greats. But the truth, as it often does, lies somewhere in between. And who knows, maybe in a different era we'd be talking about a different Serbian center as the best player in the league. 